That's because I'm awake anyway. No matter, no matter what. <laughs> I just said that the uh, time change cut up with my, with my, like with my brain. Time. Yeah. So I think I'm off mute. Can you hear me? Mom, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Well, it's on. It's not muted. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Our square got bigger, which is good. So it just depends on the Sunday, I guess, how many people are with us. The time change? Yeah, the time change. Maybe not everybody jumped the class. Not ready for that early one yet. I don't know. I was kind of stuck working at night shift, but I had to be like that the second hour twice. No, that would be good. At least if I was Well, good morning and welcome. Um, today, we need to stop about 1035. There's him sing at 1040 today. We want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to be upstairs for that, that part. So I was reminded this morning to stop on time. And so if you notice that I'm not paying attention and it's 1035, feel free to give me the watch, sing, sign, watch sign. Or, you could set an alarm. No. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. Um, and so we're... Um, I had noted that we had read six verses last week, so we got pretty far uh, in chapter five. Um, my goal has never been to read a lot of scriptures, just to make sure that we understand them and can discuss them and why they're meaningful. So whether it's long or short, one of these days we're going to finish the Book of Mormon and then somebody else can teach. But that. I'll anticipate that being real quick. So what do we do after that? We can start again. Uh, all right. Well, good morning. We're going to be talking about faith and repentance today and um, just lots of good discussion topics. Uh, we had noted last week that um, what Moroni does is he calls out individuals or situations of faith uh, and holds them up as things for us to look at for us to apply faith for ourselves. And when we do that, I think it's important that we sort of look into those situations and say, how is that faith? Where is their faith there? Um, and so uh, to do that efficiently, but also, uh, but also like treat those topics and really discuss them, I'd be a little selective on what scriptures that we look at. Um, so we can always go more or less, um, but that's what we're going to try to do is say this is, these are individuals or groups that Moreau and I said showed faith, and we're going to try to talk about where is where's the faith in that, like what is, how is that faith? Uh, I think there's some themes in there uh, that we can apply to our, to our own lives. So thank you for joining us today. Um, we'll start with uh, a prayer this morning. We want to invite the Holy Spirit to be with us so that everything that we do is pleasing to our, our, our Lord. Corey, would you mind uh, saying that prayer for us today? Dear Father, in heaven, we come to you, Lord, and bow before you, following our God, and thank you for the mercy that you show us through your word. We come to sinners, Lord, and pray for forgiveness of sin that we come before you. We pray, Father, that your spirit might be tend as we open your word, and we pray for your guidance for Brian. Amen. So I, I titled this class "Faith" into, or this section "Faith and Repentance" um, because it's a phrase used so much in the book of uh, so much in the Book of Mormon, and um, I think it helps us understand why we have faith. Um, we don't just have blind faith. We just you know. Faith isn't just there for, for nothing. Um, faith is to lead us towards a relationship with God. 
Um, faith is there so that uh, we trust him with our salvation. We trust him with our needs in this life and for that hope of what's to come. And so faith should lead us to do something. It should lead us to be obedient. It should lead us to, be, uh, to seek after God. But in the end, our call is to repentance, right? Um, and so for us to recognize sin and seek to cast off sin, seek to move away from sin, um, that requires choice. That requires um, a conscious effort to say, um, I seek after things that are holy, um, not after the things that look good to me, right? Not after the things that are all around me. And so that takes faith. It takes faith to say, this way of God is better than this way of man. So we can't repent if we don't have faith in this new life that we're seeking. Um, and so that's why in, in Mosiah, you know, Abinadi is like, we should preach nothing but faith and repentance. Because that's, that's really what it's all about. It's faith and repentance on the Lord. And so uh, we got to always keep in mind everything that we talk about should lead us to want to repent. I don't need it again. Um, so last week, uh, our six verses that we read, uh, were the, six, five, the first verses of chapter 5, and we had just noted that Ether is a prophet in these last days of the Jaredites, and we had talked at length about what it takes to have faith to preach the gospel, even though you recognize that uh, the people that you're preaching to are likely going to reject the words that you say. That you say, but regardless of what, regardless of what um, is going to happen, um, you know he knew that his job was to make sure that they knew the truth, and he preached the truth. And so we don't know what the words he said were. We don't have a record of his teachings. We have a record of the fact that he did preach. And so we have these words of Moroni abridging those things. Ether came forth, he prophesied unto the people, he cried from the morning until the going down of the sun, exhorting the people to believe in God unto repentance, lest they should be destroyed, saying unto them that by faith all things are fulfilled. Wherefore, whoso believeth in God might with surety hope for a better world even a place at the right hand of God, which hope cometh of faith, making an anchor to the souls of men, which would make them sure and steadfast, always abounding in good works. And they believed not because they saw them not. So, Ether is speaking of things that are spiritual. These people were past perceiving things that were spiritual. And whole other topic that we've already discussed, right? Faith is about things that are spiritual, right? You can't have faith in things that you can see because I see them. I know them. I know they're there, right? We have faith in things that we can't see, which is why Moroni goes on and says, next slide, we'll go back to that. Nope. Next slide. Right. Faith is, for, this is a little different than Paul says it, right? That faith is all about understanding that faith is about things that are hoped for and not seen, right? We don't see God, but when we seek after him, we perceive God. Yeah, but we perceive him in a whole different way than the things that we see around us. We know it's true because of the evidences that are there of him. And so all of the people that he's going to be talking about are people that believed in God and took action before they had proof. And they showed faith. So that's sort of his that's sort of what he's trying to do. Um, so before we get started I wanted to share um, and discuss um, sort of like the example that I had shared last week of 
of things that might help us understand faith or situations that might help us understand faith. Um, the more I thought about this, I really wanted to go back to this scene from The Chosen. Um, this shows uh, this, this um, Peter leaving the boat in the storm and going to Jesus. It's about six minutes. So we'll discuss some things that you notice or that are said after the, the clip. Um, but there's some meaningful symbolism um, or lessons that are here about this, this thing that happened with Peter leaving the boat um, that I think that we can sort of apply to these other examples. Before we watch, though, I just wanted to recognize that some people have criticized the show because there are words not in the Bible in, in here. Um, it's hard to really depict something in a story form without having some sort of dialogue going on. Um, in my mind, I've, uh, like I said, I've never perceived any of those things that are here as things that detract or change from the message. So that's really my, in my mind. The, 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 the judgment there is, does this change the message or not? Um, you can decide for yourself, I guess. Um, so in this situation, we're going to hear a reference to something Peter is struggling with in his life that is not in the scriptures. He and his wife have been struggling with the relationship. She had had a miscarriage that had affected their marriage. Peter is struggling personally. So we are all humans, right? And all of us, even the, the 12 disciples, I'm sure, had human problems that they were struggling with. And so that's sort of context for what they're going to talk about here as Peter leaves the boat. They could talk about that. So his wife's name in the show is Eden, and that's who's referenced here. So I'll try to keep it loud so everybody can hear it real good. Hi, okay. If there's an idea or a word or... Or a situation here you want to discuss afterwards to sort of hold on to that for us. Uh, keep going! What are you doing? Did anybody just see that? Over there! Over there! Over there! Over there. I don't see anything! What are we looking for? I...
my problem. I gave up everything to follow you. But you're healing down the strangers. Why do you think I allow trials? I don't know. They prove the genuineness of your faith. They strengthen you. This is strengthening you. And Eden. Keep your eyes on me. So this is uh, this is a really really simple story in the scriptures. Uh, not a whole lot of verses in the New Testament, but um, we're talking about faith, and we're talking about things that help us understand faith. What's going on here that we think we need to talk about? Make sure you grab a mic. <laughs> Peter exercised a lot of faith, but it didn't mean he didn't still need Jesus. That's a really concise way of saying what I would say in a lot of more words. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Trace. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it that even though everybody was telling him no, he still got out of the boat. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a double hard thing to do. Well, because you're going to look out out there and you're going to know what you know in your mind about the physical reality of walking on water. Mm -hmm. And you'll say, I can't do that. The only reason he can do that or even has that idea is because he sees a Savior doing it. And so if it's possible with him, maybe it's possible with me too. But what else? In the midst of the struggle, it's hard to keep your eyes where we need to keep them. I mean, we see what's going on here. Maybe I'm weird or something. But... No, that's, that's true. It's just in the midst of the struggle, it becomes more important than ever. To well, stay if, focused there. And if all the people you know and love are saying, no, it's yeah. not safe. Well, it's, <laughs> it's it's safe. They're the ones you've been hearing most of your life. Yeah. <laughs> it's distractions. Like, he was probably feeling the water splashing on him, hearing the noise and the storm, and it distracted him from his focus. Mm -hmm. So. That's why it's hard to keep your eyes on <laughs> Yeah. 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 The, Rolling, right. rolling agreement. But reminder, yeah. yeah, that's where you need to focus. One of the thoughts that 
I had kind of thinking of this in ether. You know, it talked about ether. Oh, I'd say this thing until nine. You know, this is what God commanded him to do and asked him to do. So there was, you know, there was that element of trust and obedience, but there was such a constancy from morning until night. And to me, when we do, like, you know, tasks, whether it's baking a cake or building a shed or, you know, whatever, is we see that the reward that we get is we see things start to take shape. We see a result for our actions. And to continue faith and continue striving when you don't see any reaction. You know, the people that Ether was preaching to, because they weren't seeing any miracles, they didn't believe anything. And, you know, here's Peter. He's kind of walking on water because he sees Christ walking on water. But, you know, he, he gave in to those doubts and, you know, the humanness and weakness that he had in the moment. I, I, I've been out on the ocean in a small boat, not so small, and it wasn't anywhere near like this kind of storm. And, you know, it was pretty nerve-wracking. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine trying to be walking on water, which just boggles your brain because you're, like you said, your, your brain is telling you this is not possible and to not lose that focus. But to be able to keep your focus from morning until night, morning until night, over and over again, and not seeing any kind of result, that's, I mean, that's, that's a lot of faith that to keep, to keep on keeping on. Mm -hmm. And that's, that, that's reality, right? Is some of the things that we're striving for, the, some of the things that we're expecting, looking forward to some of the things we're praying for. Um, you know, we don't, they don't just pop, plop right in front of us most of the time. Um, that's why we, there's these words in the Book of Mormon are so important, the steadfastness and the diligence, this persistence that we're anchored to our faith and we're going to continue moving forward even though necessarily we don't, even though we can't see, right, exactly what's next. We can't see the evidences of all of those things right in front of us. We know this to be true, and so we continue doing it. Um, so constancy is, is real important. Yeah, I think that this shows also, you know, we think we have faith. Peter said, faith's not my problem. Well, <laughs> He sort of learned a little bit right there. <laughs> well, you know, I believe in you. Yeah, you do, right? But do, believe, do we then believe in him when we look around us and we've started in this, in this walk and then all around us things are crashing down around us? In the midst of the struggle and the strife and the storm, do we still have faith then? Or... Does our eye go off of the Savior and start looking at the, the struggles around us? Well, that's when we know that, that's the test of our faith, right? In the heart, in all of those hard things, are we still able to keep our eye on Him? And no, no judgment here from me on Peter. And we could probably also all say that, like, well, gosh, a lot of us get racked by the storm. A lot of us struggle with the storm. Yeah. Francie? I just find myself ignoring God more when I'm in the calm of life and there is no storms. That's my problem. I mean, when there's a storm, I pray, 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 pray. <laughs> but when the storm's over, it's like, oh, live life. Free. Mm -hmm. Why do I allow trials? We we talked about right? we talked to, <laughs> we yeah. talked about that a lot here in class. It's like you know the Lord sometimes give, the Lord gives us hard things to continue to uh, have us rely on Him. We we do tend to joke about Peter and sinking, but he's the only one who got out of the boat. Yeah, the other ones would. Not having it. <laughs> it's already over. You know, there's 
there's another New Testament story about a boat in a storm and Jesus. But in that story, he's asleep in the boat. They're all still afraid they're going to die. Uh-huh. The common theme in both of those is Jesus. Mm-hmm. Whether you're in the boat or out, you need Jesus. Mm-hmm. Well, at this point in their relationship, where they, were, they still didn't really fully understand who he was. You know, how are you doing this? You know, and then I think it goes on, if I remember correctly, that he calms the storm. They sort of merge those together. And, uh, yeah. That, you know, well then, you know, they've seen a lot of things and they've heard a lot of things, but they still don't really understand. And I think maybe that's where I get messed up a lot. Is I don't fully understand that. We're not going to. <laughs> yeah, he, they had just left the setting of the loaves of the fishes. They had just seen the miracle of feeding the 5,000. And Jesus had sent them on their way. And he had stayed, at, he had stayed back. So that's the, you see, after all you've seen, this is what you're surprised about. Um, so whose power was it that allowed Peter to walk on water? Was it Peter? Was it something inside of Peter that allowed him to walk on water? I can say no, right? right? He could only do anything that he did because the Savior was present and he was looking at the Savior, right? It wasn't about any power that Peter had is that he, he was doing, he was stepping out of faith towards the, towards the Savior. Yeah, it, which would be different than, hmm, if I have enough faith, I can get out in the middle of Lake Tacoma and start walking. <laughs> Those are different things. The Savior was there, right? Um, so, I, I like this because it helps us understand a little bit about our own faith and some of the things that are real within our lives. Um, and you know, we're just going to recognize here that you know, when we move out in faith, um, that it's going to be um, faith, our faith is going to be most shown when we are moving <coughs> towards God and we're following his plan and we're trusting in his word and we he asks us to do things or we can feel compelled to do things by the spirit but we don't know the outcome of those things we don't know how it'll happen we have no idea um, how it will work out but we step forward anyway and in none of the stories we talk about the people uh, are people led forward by God as they start moving and then everything is good. Everything is no, no problems, right? And every story that Moroni, in all of these situations that Moroni, that Moroni talks about, people endure hardships and trials and suffering and None of, and none of that is easy, right? There's a storm in all of them. And so their faith was, what do you do in that storm, right? So are we still on the boat? Or are we on the water? <laughs> Depends on which time you talk about <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I think we step out, sometimes I think we step back. In this class, I think we're in the boat. I'm pretty safe. Pretty safe. <laughs> um, I feel that, um, you know, what the Lord is asking us to do sometimes get out of the boat, right? Um, there are things, um, there are things that we can do that will get us away from safety that sometimes we don't do because we're, Afraid, it's different, it's new, it's risky. 
like I said, I am risk averse. Stop. I am risk averse. I try. I tend to avoid risks. I try to do it the safe way. Um, it, the Lord has asked. The Lord calls people into trusting Him, and these situations are not places that are safe or risk free, right? Um, so, um, our hope and our confidence in God is about the things that He can do for us in this world. Our hope and our confidence in God is also our assurance about what he will do for us in the next world, right? So Moroni in chapter 7 talks all about faith, and we've got to remember that part of our faith is also faith in eternal life, faith in the resurrection and crucifixion and the blood of Christ to wash away our sin. So um, we exercise faith towards towards knowing God, towards eternal life, too. Um, so a lot about faith. So Ether 5, 7 through 10, I'll read this one. And then um, we'll look at our first example. And I don't have all the answers here, so I invite you to chime in on some of these. Because these are more known as examples. Um, this verse, verse 7, is super important. Dispute not because you see not. You receive no witness, not until after the trial of your faith. So um, this, is, this is how God works, is we step forward, we learn, and then we see after we take that step forward, we see the results of that. That's where the testimony is, is on the other side of our faith, or maybe in the middle of our faith. Uh, for it was by faith that Christ showed himself unto our fathers after that he had risen from the dead. And he showed not himself unto them until after they had faith in him. Wherefore it must needs be that some had faith in him. For he showed himself not unto the world. But because of the faith of men he has showed himself unto the world. And glorified the name of the Father. And prepared a way, the way that others might be partakers of the heavenly gift. That, those, that they might hope for those things which they have not seen. Wherefore, ye may also have hope in partakers of the gift, if you will but have faith. Do I have another box here? I thought, this, I thought so. Okay, so Moroni's first example is the people that are left after the crucifixion of Christ, right? He said, um, it was by faith that Christ showed himself unto our fathers after he had risen from the dead. So Moroni is talking back to chapter 3 Nephi. He's talking about this moment that Christ appears unto the Nephites. He said, it was by faith that Christ appeared unto them. So we don't have a lot of clues about that. Moroni probably has a whole lot more information than we do about the things that happened to those people. But because we're calling out all of these, we're going to try to we're going to try to see what's going on there. So I got three verses. I could read more, but three verses to help us understand that. Yeah, feel free. To, this is the part where feel free to add if you have thoughts. So, I'm turning back to chapter 4 of 3 Nephi. And 3 Nephi describes um, all of these great destructions that had taken place. Um, and then it describes the voice that comes to all of the people declaring that I am Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And so they hear this voice, but around them is all of this destruction, like cities have been burned and sunk into the ground and fallen into the sea, and all these people have died. And this is sort of some things that are described there. Um, well, I'm going to back up a little bit. Um, 
verse 60. And it came to pass that after the people had heard these words, they had began to weep and howl again because of the loss of the kindreds and friends. And it came to pass that three days did pass away. And it was in the morning, and the darkness did pass off from the face of the land, and the earth did cease to tremble, and the rocks did cease to rend, and the dreadful groanings did cease, and all the tumultuous noises did pass away. And the earth did cleave again together that it stood in the mourning and the weeping and the wailing of the people which were spared alive did cease. So that's the first part. So um, what, I, what I am seeing here and just imagining is um, if we had in this place that we live and all around us three days of darkness and destruction and maybe our family members had died. For sure, all of the things around us are just, you know, roads and streets and bridges and buildings and houses are in ruins all around us, right? And the, the, more, the sun finally comes up and we look at that devastation, right? What do we do? Now, they had been weeping and wailing and mourning, in the, but, and they could have continued, right, weeping, wailing, and mourning. But and then in 64, we get, and their mourning was turned into joy, and their lamentations into the praise and thanksgiving unto the Lord Jesus Christ, their Redeemer. And thus were the scriptures fulfilled which had been spoken of by the prophets. Um, so, I'm sure that Moroni knows more about what happened there than we do. But, um, something happens within these people, or at least part of the people, where in the midst of all of the destructions and devastations and death of family members they cleave unto the hope of Jesus Christ, right? They cleave unto the hope of the thing that they had heard, that voice that they had heard, and their knowledge of the prophecies and promises, and the covenants that they knew about. And so at some point in there, they chose to turn their mourning into joy. That's what we know, right? They hadn't seen anything yet, they had simply heard a voice, a still voice, in the midst of the darkness. But they made a choice to have joy. Thoughts about that part? Well, on a baser level, you would be happy that you survived. You could be happy you're, you're alive. Yep. It wasn't me. <laughs> and hope came with the sun. Mm -hmm. Hope came with the light coming back out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think when uh, you see the bad thing that happened in your life or whatever, like when you see like, oh, now I see why that happened. Like why, you know, you see the good that's going to come from it, mm -hmm. if, if that makes any sense. I think maybe. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, wait, this means good choose has come, yeah. I'm oh, trying okay. to, yeah, I'm trying to sort of pull out like, so um, where is their faith in here, right? And so with that light that comes hope, with, with coming out of that experience, there's hope. Um, but for sure their joy has to be in the words they heard, right? Because um, without that hope of Jesus Christ and his work in them, you know, work for them, right? The, the realization that all of these hundreds of years of prophecy have been fulfilled, without that knowledge, the sun could still come up, and maybe it's worse, because now you see how bad it is, Right? How bad is it really? They had to rebuild their whole civilization. Um, so this one's pretty brief, so we don't have a lot of information. Um, so um, in the midst of this, they chose to cleave unto the promises they knew about in the hope of Jesus Christ coming. 
Um, I don't think it says in here I'm coming in three days, does it? It just says I've, I've spared you as a hen gathered their chicken under her wings. Return unto me with full purpose of heart. Right? And stops. So after that, the first verse of chapter 5 we get, and now it came to pass that there was a great multitude gathered together of the people of Nephi round about the temple which was in the land bountiful. I've heard um, David Collier sort of talk about this setting um, in the past. Um, Then, after this joy, the people decided, right, we have a period of time here where the people decided that they needed to gather together and they went to the temple at the Land Bountiful and they, they went there expecting. Right? So something worked upon them to gather them together to look, to look up. To look up for God. I don't know that, what they expected. Um, uh, but out of that they gathered together to sort of like maybe joy together, um, but they knew that they needed to gather together for something, and they chose to do that. And then Jesus comes down. But when own I said, Jesus wouldn't have shown himself unto them unless they showed faith. Any other thoughts there? Just trying to... to help us ourselves understand like in the midst of trial we have choices and in the midst of their trial they had choices that's what makes sense to me anything makes sense to anyone else any other ideas I just see the parallel that uh-huh. in, in the New Testament story there's a storm they hear a voice they come to Jesus and in the end it says and uh, when they were in the ship, they came and worshipped him, saying, Of oh, a truth, thou art the Son of God. In the Americas, there's a storm, they hear a voice, they come to Jesus, mm-hmm. and they kiss his feet, and they say, You are our God. Mm-hmm. It's, all, it's almost, in every trial of our life, it's all, almost the same thing. But, but it's always, what's interesting is that the text in the Bible never really answers the question, Why was Jesus out there in the water anyhow? Mm-hmm. Know, but he wasn't just going for a walk. But no, no, he, no. He was already there, even though they thought the big problem was the storm in their lives, but the bigger problem was their lack of faith. And he, he proves himself either way. Yeah. Yeah, they're really close. There's really similarities between those two, mm-hmm. two things. So again, Moroni is abridging a record. And um, from all that he knows, right, um, these people left over after this terrible tragedy um, showed faith by choosing to worship God, choosing to have joy, choosing to, 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 to look forward to that, to cleave to the idea that this promise had been fulfilled and then gathering together, right, in, in, the, in anticipation of something. Okay, so I have this really weird thought. My understanding is when Jesus was crucified, didn't God himself leave Jesus' body to die in human form? And maybe when that happened, the people over here felt that distance. And then when he regained it, when he rose again, they felt that and knew that it was finished and that this had happened. And so that was my thought. Um, and like like he said, Jesus was in the boat or out of the boat. The the object of the storm was Jesus was still with them, and we need him with mm-hmm. us instead of the absence of the darkness and horrifying storm that they went through for three days of the darkness and all that. So that was my thought. I I don't know if there's really truth to it, but maybe there's something with God being present in our lives even before Christ sent the comforter to us these days. So. Yeah, I think that's the whole 
that that's maybe one of the big ideas about faith is, right, we're, we're not going to walk through life with calm, sunny weather. Um, we're going to walk through life, and the Lord's going to lead us, and there's going to be storms of our making, his, his, his allowing um, uh, other people in our lives, and there's going to be storms there. Um, and he's always going to be, the option is always there to call on him, because he's never going to leave us. He's never going to be a situation we can't involve him in that. And our choices involving him and looking at him or not. Right? That's really, he's always, always there in, in the midst of all that. Yeah, I was going to add that um, one of the things it says in 69 is that uh, they read the scriptures. And in the scriptures, they recalled Zenos and his prophecy and then Jacob and his prophecies. And so therefore, in the midst of the storm, God was able to say, you have studied this. Uh -huh. Remember these things? Yeah. And then they became even closer to him because then they were like, oh, yeah. I told you these were coming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is, should not be a surprise. <laughs> and then they went forth uh -huh. and testified unto the multitude who was not there. Yes. And that brought them even closer as they gathered then in five Yes, months. they shared the word, right? Yes, yes they, they passed that on. Okay. All right. Um, some Josh in here, good Book of Mormon stories for next time. He'll, he can take over. Um, so we're going to recognize here um, some really important words, important ideas. Um, going back to, I think, our next idea. Um, I'll just read it. Um, our second idea here, also sort of connected with big ideas about faith, um, it was by faith that they of old were called after the holy order of God, where for by faith was the law of Moses given. But in the gift of his son, God hath prepared a more excellent way, and it is by faith that it has been fulfilled. For if there be no faith among the children of men, God could do no miracles among them. Wherefore he showeth not himself until after the trial of their faith. So we'll talk about this, this example here in a second of uh, the people of Israel and their, their journey in the wilderness. Um, I believe that's what he's referring to. Um, but we still get this idea that miracles come, the uh, proof of God comes when we do what he has said, and we follow that in faith. We step out out of the boats into the water, and then after that, we see the miracle. So, um, it's yeah, we don't have the assurance of what's going to happen before we do it. After we do it, okay, that's how that goes. So, um, that's the order. So the more excellent way is Christ. Before that was given, the children of Israel were under this Abrahamic Mosaic law. Um, and Moses or Moroni cites that. They're receiving this happen through faith. This is thought a lot about this example to try to make that meaningful. So we're going to th think a little bit about what we know about that. <laughs> Hopefully we make sense of it in seven minutes. <laughs> okay. Got some pictures to help us. So, um, think about your Ten Commandments. So the children, of Li is the children of Israel, the house of Israel, they're led out of Egypt. What's What's the 
What's the mood here that you remember from just your imagination or all of the all of the uh, those plagues and trials are over and the Pharaoh said, All right, get out of here. So how is that portrayed? Like, woohoo. We have all kinds of people that have been given freedom and they are headed to the promised land. And they're all super excited in the movie. They got their donkeys and their foods and their whatevers and carts and things and they head out. Optimism. 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 There you go. So. (laughs) And the dog, Rebecca? Oh, the doll. Yeah. Where's the doll? <laughs> so that's that's sort of like life. Like right? so, we we move out in the new direction, and we have optimism. Like it's gonna be awesome. We're gonna go out of Egypt, and we're gonna go to a land flowing with milk and honey, and we're gonna be there in three days, and all will be well. <laughs> <laughs> All will be well. All the bad parts are behind us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's not what happened, is it? No. It took them longer. <laughs> it took detours. Has anything been e- has anything been easy for the house of Israel? <clears throat> has there been anything easy for us? Has Even anything been easy for church? us? What did the uh, early saints think when they got the Book of Mormon? We got the we got the word. We're gonna do the things. We're gonna build us a temple. Then we're gonna move to independence, and we're gonna we're gonna have Zion now. And yet, in the midst of that, they also had false prophecy by uh, some, and that was ha- and that had to be said. And we had to, struggles and trials, and we had our anticipations of things and how they would be. And um, the Lord did some other things with them, right? Has done some other things with us, right? So um, I'll read. I'll pull out some sections of Deuteronomy here in a minute. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe next time. I like Deuteronomy a lot. Um, I encourage you to read Deuteronomy. It's not like numbers or it's good, it's good. It's good stuff. Okay, so another Ten Commandments. The children of Israel get to the edge of the Red Sea or wherever they are. Um, They're backed up to the water. The Lord does something amazing only the Lord could do. He allowed them to cross on dry land to escape the en- enemy, right? He has a plan for his, for his people, so he's going to show forth his power. He's going to do what is necessary for them to escape, right? So they, they cross over the Red Sea. They get safely across. The armies of Pharaoh are destroyed. Those, their, their pursuers are destroyed, right? Um, after you've seen the plagues, maybe, but after you've seen something like that, like you would think that would be enough, right? That tells us something a little bit about miracles, right? That's the, we have some guidance in the scripture about miracles, right? If I don't believe already, what will a miracle do to me? What will I do with a miracle? I'll explain it away. It won't be meaningful to me if I wasn't involved in that, right? If, it, uh, uh, if my heart hasn't changed, the miracle doesn't mean anything, right? Um, which is really important. So 
then we have, uh, I just found this, it sort of matches up with what I understand that they did, right? Uh, the House of Israel camped in camps. Um, they're, they're, they had a structure and an order for their camps. They're all nomads in the desert. Um, all of the ten tri- the, all of the twelve tribes are arranged in a specific order and pattern around the tabernacle in the middle, and um, they are in the desert, and they are moving forward away from Egypt, but probably not daily. Right, I believe it probably based on the no- a long length of time they're out there. Uh, they're probably in camps for period of time, then they move, they move, they move, they move. Um, so they're in the desert. It probably not a nice place to live. Um, and how long? Did anybody know what they say? Like how long it would have taken if they had just walked straight to Israel? How long it should have taken them? Yeah, not long at all. Right? Yeah. There's no reason. <laughs> why they ought to be in the desert for 40 years. Other than that's what was God's plan. Right? They weren't ready yet for the promised land. God needed to do a work with them first. Right? Um, And so they're in the desert, and I guess we'll pick this up next time. How do they survive? What's, what are they doing here? Manna from heaven. Picking up manna, right? So, um, we'll, I guess we're done. We'll pick <laughs> up this story next time. Uh, we're trying to see what the Lord did with the house of Israel. Um, my interpretation of this is the Lord forced them to have faith through trials. They were, they were sort of, okay, no, that's all, I'll, I'll stop there. All right, uh, thank you for our discussion today. Um, we'll see you upstairs. Have a blessed week.